Welcome to another video, today we are going to talk about how to generate synthetic time series data with open source tools. To download the complete source check the link in description. I have written an article where you can find the source code plus a written explanation if you don't want to watch the video. This is an introduction to the generative adversarial network model doppelganger, and how you can use a new open source PyTorch implementation of it to create high quality synthetic time series data. Time series data, a sequence of measurements of the same variables across multiple points in time, is ubiquitous in the modern data world. Just as with tabular data, we often want to generate synthetic time series data to protect sensitive information or create more training data when real data is rare. Some applications for synthetic time series data include sensor readings, timestamp log messages, financial market prices, and medical records. The additional dimension of time where trends and correlations across time are just as important as correlations between variables creates added challenges for synthetic data. We really like the doppelganger model and associated paper, using GNs for sharing network time series data, challenges, initial promise, and open questions by Lin E.T. Al, and are in the process of incorporating this model into our APIs and console. As part of that work, we re-implemented the doppelganger model in PyTorch and are thrilled to release it as part of our open source Gretel Synthetics library. In this video, we give a brief overview of the doppelganger model, provide sample usage of our PyTorch implementation, and demonstrate excellent synthetic data quality on a task synthesizing daily Wikipedia web traffic with a 40x runtime speedup compared to the TensorFlow 1 implementation. Doppelganger Model Doppelganger is based on a generative adversarial network, JAN, with some modifications to better fit the time series generation task. As a GAN, the model uses an adversarial training scheme to simultaneously optimize the discriminator, or critic, and generator networks by comparing synthetic and real data. Once trained, arbitrary amounts of synthetic time series data can be created by passing input noise to the generator network. In their paper, Lin et al. review existing synthetic time series approaches and their own observations to identify limitations and propose several specific improvements that make up Doppelganger. These range from generic GAN improvements to time series specific tricks. A few of these key modifications are Generator contains an LSTM to produce sequence data, but with a batch setup where each LSTM cell outputs multiple time points to improve temporal correlations. Supports variable length sequences in both training and generation, planned, but not yet implemented in our PyTorch version. For example, one model can use and create 10 or 15 seconds of sensor measurements. Supports fixed variables, attributes, that do not vary over time. This information is often found with time series data, for example, an industry or sector associated with each stock in financial price history data. Supports per example scaling of continuous variables to handle data with large dynamic range. For example, differences of several orders of magnitude in page views for popular versus rare Wikipedia pages. A small note on terminology and data setup. Doppelganger requires training data with multiple examples of time series. Each example consists of zero or more attribute values, fixed variables that do not vary over time, and one or more features that are observed at each time point. When combined into a training data set, the examples look like a 2D array of attributes, example x fixed variable, and a 3D array of features, example x time x time variable. Depending on the task and available data, this setup may require splitting a few long time sequences into shorter chunks that can be used as the examples for training. Sample usage. Our PyTorch implementation supports two styles of input, NumPy arrays or Pandas data frame, plus a number of configuration options for the model. The simplest way to use our model is with your training data in a Pandas data frame. For this setup, the data must be in a wide format where each row is an example, some columns may be attributes, and the remaining columns are the time series values. The following snippet demonstrates training and generating data from a data frame.
If your data isn't already in this wide format, you may be able to use the pandas pivot method to convert it to the expected structure. The data frame input is somewhat limited currently, though we have plans to support other ways of accepting of time series data in the future. For the most control and flexibility, you can also pass NumPy arrays directly for training, and similarly receive the attribute and feature arrays back when generating data, demonstrated below. Results As a new implementation that switches from TensorFlow 1 to PyTorch, with potential differences in underlying components such as optimizers, parameter initialization, etc., we want to confirm our PyTorch code works as expected. To do this, we've replicated a selection of results from the original paper. Since our current implementation only supports fixed-length sequences, we focus on a data set of Wikipedia web traffic, WWT. The WWT dataset, used by Lin E.T. Al and originally from Kaggle, contains daily traffic measurements to various Wikipedia pages. There are three discrete attributes, domain, access type, and agent, associated with each page and a single time series feature of daily page views for 1.5 years, 550 days. See image 1 for a few example time series from the WWT dataset. Note the page views are log scaled to dash 1, 1, based on min slash max page views across the entire dataset. The training data of 50k pages we used in our experiments, already scaled, is available as a CSV on S3. We present three images showing different aspects of the fidelity of the synthetic data. In each image, we compare the real data with three synthetic versions, 1. Fast PyTorch implementation with larger batch size and smaller learning rate, 2. PyTorch implementation with original parameters, 3. TensorFlow 1 implementation. In image 2, we look at the distribution of attributes where the synthetic data is a close match to the real distributions. One of the challenges with the WWT data is that different time series have very different ranges of page views. Some Wikipedia pages consistently receive lots of traffic, while others are much less popular, but occasionally get a spike due to some relevant current event, for example, a breaking news story related to the page. Lin e. T. Al found that Doppelganger is highly effective at generating time series on different scales, figure 6 of the original paper. In image 3, we provide similar plots showing the distribution of time series midpoints. For each example, the midpoint is halfway between the minimum and maximum page views attained over the 550 days. Our PyTorch implementation shows similar fidelity for the midpoints. Lastly, Traffic to most Wikipedia pages exhibits weekly and yearly patterns. To evaluate these patterns, we use autocorrelation, that is, Pearson correlation of page views at different time lags, one day, two days, etc. Autocorrelation plots for the three synthetic versions are shown in image 4, similar to figure 1 of the original paper. Both PyTorch versions produce the weekly and yearly trend as observed in the original paper. The TensorFlow 1 results don't match figure 1 of Lin at all exactly as the above plots are from our experiments. We observed somewhat inconsistent training using the original parameters where the model occasionally does not pick up the yearly, or even weekly, pattern. The lower learning rate, 1 times 10 to the power of negative 4, and larger batch size, 1000, used in our fast version makes retrainings more consistent.